happy holidays. Plants for furling videos, I have a million of them. YouTube tutorial videos, I have one big one almost ready. This is going to be a little mishmash of that because my husband uh, decided to get me some beads, but he didn't get me Perler brand beads. He went onto Amazon and got a uh, multi-pack of beads from a company called Tomorek? Oh, it's Tomorotech. Anyway, he got this uh, big, big box of multicolor beads, each individually wrapped. Um, I checked it out and there should be about 800 beads per little pack. There's 45 colors. 36,000 beads altogether, and the price was $29.95, so before tax. One of the things that's really important to me uh, when it comes to teaching people about purling and when I'm trying to uh, help people get into beading and people who are first starting out is figuring out what's the best uh, price of beads and like best deal on beads that I can recommend so that someone can get a good collection going of basic colors and have, you know, some uh, options and opportunities for uh, what sort of projects they're going to make. Having a lot of colors is very important when you're first starting out because that way you just have to worry about like, okay, what interests me? What sort of thing would I want to build? Not, oh, I have to wait this long for shipping or this long until I can go to the store to get these colors now that I've picked this up. It seems like it's a good variety of colors. I just wanted to uh, check out like, what's the actual cost of the beads? Is this a good deal? What's the quality of the beads? Every different kind of bead brand seems to have like different melting points and different clarity of like vibrancy of color after their irons. So I wanted to uh, test them out for you and basically show you that these are worth the cost. First of all, this is the box that it comes in. Those are the beads. You can also see I got some of these clear ironing films. I've never used those before. Right off the bat, that might be a pretty decent deal because I think ArtCal is the only brand that produces this ironing film, at least in the sense that it's meant for beads specifically. I'm sure this sort of film existed before Perler beads and then uh, started getting used for perler beads, but so on the ArtCal website, it's six dollars for for five sheets. I've got one, two, looks like three sheets in that box. I didn't look too hard. There might be more underneath all the beads. Yeah, apparently it's supposed to. I mean, if it works very well, then you'd be able to see the beads clearly through the ironing and it wouldn't leave a film, whereas wax paper and um, I think, I don't think parchment paper leaves that much of a filminess, but wax paper definitely does. Um, and you wouldn't have to worry about peeling off earthy bits. Anyway, the thing about the Tomarek beads is I was trying to figure out if they are made by Tomarek or if these are ArtCal beads without the actual uh, title of ArtCal on them. It probably doesn't uh, cost a lot to produce these. Just know that ArtCal and Hama are the two other really big uh, fuse bead brands, whereas these are just kind of called fuse beads for kids. Since I'm just specifically looking at if this deal on Amazon is a good one for uh, newbies to try out, I'm just gonna worry about that and not worry about whether or not they're secretly ArtCal or Hama beads. So ignoring tax, and it should be free delivery for Prime, but I don't know uh, what the shipping is if you don't have Prime. Uh, I always try to factor in shipping uh, when getting beads, because if you get them from FuseBeadStore.com, uh, they have their own shipping. If you get them from Perler.com, they have their own shipping. Sometimes they'll give you the option for expedited shipping, and sometimes it won't. Uh, they have deals for if you get a certain number of bags, you get a price that's lower, like $2.83 a bag, I think, or two fifty dollars a bag for a thousand beads. There's also free shipping deals where if you spend more than $60, you get um, free shipping. I usually get my beads either from FuseBeadStore.com or from uh, Perler.com because usually those are the best deals. Amazon is usually the worst deals for Perler beads. They uh, have priced as high as five dollars for a bag of a thousand beads, which is very insane. And that's probably because they're a third party and they're getting them from Fuse Bead or Perler. But so I'm gonna do some quick math here. Twenty nine ninety five for this whole set of beads divided by thirty six 
thousand beads. I mean, this is the price per bead in this pack. Now I'm going to multiply that by a thousand, and the price per thousand beads in this pack is 83 cents, which is very, very good. That's less than a dollar per thousand. That would be the cheapest I've ever bought beads or found beads anywhere. I'm guessing it's the material itself that it's made out of. But if it's just as high quality as Perler, then I'm gonna exclusively start buying from Tomor Tomorrow Tech. I keep wanting to say Tomorrow Tech because I'm a big nerd. Shigaraki started a fuse bead brand. Anyway, um, if it's good quality beads, that's gonna be great. So right off the bat, um, you're looking at these beads, and they look pretty good, but I've noticed some of them look a little bit anemic, if that makes sense. The shades aren't going to, probably aren't going to perfectly match up with perler bead shades. I don't know how well it'll show up on camera. Like, this is dark blue, clearly. And a pack of 6,000 dark blue here of perler. Can you tell? Yeah, it doesn't really show up on camera that much, the difference. I'm going to go ahead and iron these and show you the difference between this and these, if there is any. Because to me, like, when I hold it up to the light, I can kind of almost see through the color of the dark blue. So that to me tells me that when it's ironed, it's not going to be as vibrant as when I iron my regular dark blue. But let's see. Okay, so right off the bat, even if I look at them closely with a light, I'm not noticing a lot of difference between these two. As far as I can tell, those two shades are very similar, and if I mix these together, like I do with my, uh, when I'm trying to figure out the different colors that I have in Perla, I don't know if I'd be able to separate these two out from each other. Now to do the ironing test. I'll go ahead and use this. I've never tried this before. That way we can see if there's any real difference in like the melting or anything like that. Starting with my perler beads. Let's hope my heat on this isn't too high. That's a weird sensation. Oh, I think the heat's too high. <laughs> That's the highest setting. I'm usually right there. But that's not recommended for regular people, I don't think. The amount of warping that this did immediately. I don't have that problem with wax paper or parchment paper. Instead of trying to get that right, I'm just going to remove this and use my regular paper. Another cool thing about parchment paper, you can't see through it, but it doesn't stick no matter what temperature you use, unless you set it on fire like I did there. But that was with an actual uh, lighter. You can use it over and over and over again. well ironed enough. Normally I do wax paper first, but it's just a small thing. Okay. Interesting. So, not noticing a lot of the color difference in the two of them like I thought there would be. I thought I'd be able to see through this, but it seems just as bold as this one. The only thing I'm noticing right off the bat is that this feels a little bit flimsier than this does for some reason. I'm going to do another experiment. Right up against each other like this, I am noticing that my perler beads seem just slightly 
foggier in color than th these beads. So maybe that's what I'm noticing. Maybe these are shinier. They do claim to be high quality. I am noticing that these beads are melting a lot faster than these beads, which could be a good thing. Quicker melting. That does seem like it would risk over melting. But there we go, that seems about even. This time I'm gonna flip it over. On this side, I'm noticing right away that these definitely melted faster than those. They're a lot shorter. They look almost identical still, but one definitely did melt a little bit quicker. Yeah, so height-wise, this one lost a ton of height. It flattened out a lot quicker, and these seem to hold up to the iron a little bit. With these, I'm going to bend, make it a little rainbow, and I'm still feeling a good amount of resistance like it's ready to go right back to its shape. And if I were to iron this side, it would easily still have plenty of room to melt, like if I needed to correct its shape and then remelt it again. This one, let's try the bend. Feeling a lot of resistance there. It's not as flexible as the other one. It definitely feels like there's a slightly stronger bond and I'm wondering if that's because of the amount of uh, melting or what. It's just not as flexible. Now the trouble with this is if I needed to flatten it out again and melt the other side, I think I'd very quickly end up with a uh, very thin um, bead situation going on because it's already lost a lot of height. It's probably why it's so strong because there's a ton of this piled up plastic at the bottom. So color wise, that's pretty that's pretty amazing. If you can monitor and like probably at a lower temperature I bet. Maybe these would melt at a lower temperature better. Which makes me think they might be Art Cal because I've heard that Art Cal melts very well. I wanna look at these other shades. There are definitely some that look a lot like curler. This shade right here looks kind of like a mix between sand and tan and I usually use sand for skin tones and uh, tan for shading on skin tones but then here's this this is definitely a sand color so this is like a tan that's I don't know a little bit more golden they also have ones that are supposed to be clear like this um, don't know if you can tell but these are just your basic Clear orange. Let's see what we actually got in this pack. Right off the bat, I'm gonna say that uh, if I'm ever out of a shade, but I really want to finish a project and I'm not too worried about um, the ironing issues, then I'll probably definitely use these as a substitute. Blue, skin, ugly orange. This one makes me think a lot like of a cobalt. I'm probably not gonna have room for all these. Actual orange, and yellow. That's actually more of a gold. I am noticing that a lot of these. Whoa! Look at this. These are both. They don't show up well on the camera, but you can see the color similarity. These are both a blue green. They're just one's much bluer and one's much greener. The thing about these is I could find a perler bead that matches up with each of these shades. Like that's cherry, that's straight up cherry. This bag is still going. I've got light blue and like cerulean, metallic silver, I've never bought that. This one straight up looks like a flamingo or coral. I think it's called flamingo or it might be the blush or the pink. There's a few shades that are very close to this. I've still got, like look at this, it's still going your black. There's a, a dark gray, gold, purple, or fuchsia. This is like a army bullet shiny shade. Is that more black? What is this then? This might be midnight. That's a clear, gray, some more greens. That one's shamrock. This one's, I'm not sure. 
is another pink. This pink is the pink that I used for the blood on my Danganronpa ones. Regular pink. A clear green that actually doesn't look too bad. This is a very pale yellow that I think is called... It looks like butter to me, so it should be called butter. Basic red. This is like a brick brown. <laughs> yeah, that's the that's the pack. All of that for thirty dollars. I wonder if it actually one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four, twenty five, twenty six, twenty seven, twenty eight, twenty nine, thirty. 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45. Look at that. They're not lying. So you're getting film paper that if you don't use a high temperature, which you probably don't need to considering these melt a lot quicker and easier than Perler ran, three strips of that paper, you get 45 shades, 800 of each, I'm guessing approximately. They probably don't have... They probably go by weight, so you might lose or gain a few. For $30, potentially with free prime shipping. Tax, I can't see being too high on this, but I didn't check, so, I mean, check yourself if you're really on a budget. Honestly, this, to me, is a great deal for someone who's starting out. And these are good enough quality from what I've just tested that I am considering switching from perler to whatever this is. If I can find like a place where I can get packs of a thousand or more, because sometimes they don't always have all of these shades available easily. Whereas on perler and fusebeadstore.com they generally always have the same shades available and they're adding more. And you can also get um, certain deals, like uh, they'll just give you a free bag of a thousand or they'll give you three different special like themed colors uh, for free with your order or they'll give you a tool. I've gotten tons of tools that I wouldn't have otherwise bought for myself that I now am able to try out like the uh, the pen for doing line by line that I wouldn't have bought if it was just me on the website but uh, I also buy a lot in bulk so that's why that sort of stuff is important to me. Especially if you're making not giant stuff like I am. Like, I have to be really careful about consistency with my beads when I'm making the big stuff. And I like having beads that don't melt too easily when I'm doing the big stuff because chances are I'm going to be going back over a lot of areas over and over again. And if they melt right away, then they're just going to start, like, burning or warping or, uh, like, just pulling apart. And I do not want that. But if you are starting out or you're making a bunch of little things and you're just going quick and being really careful with your ironing temperature uh, and your pressure and stuff like that, this is great. Really good deal for starting out. They're also great for uh, if you want to just get a pack and have that as your backup for if you run out of one of your other shades because it seems like a lot of these could be interchangeable with Perler and as long as you're careful with your ironing, you won't really notice a color difference. Hope that was helpful. This is probably going to be the first uh, actual product review slash tutorial situation. No, it's a product review for sure, huh? Probably the first one of those that I'm going to have posted on my YouTube. I've got lots of other stuff in the works for the YouTube. I'm just really not used to having an audience that actually wants my videos. I'm sorry, it's taking me so long to get that done. The pressure. Of actually producing something good is high. Oh, I kind of want to make a bunch of little sprites now, so maybe that'll be the next video that I post. Anyway, hope that helped. I'm Kinnit. This is my face. These are my beads. Oh, and one more thing, by the way. Oh god. Something I realized after finishing the video. This? $30, right? This? 22,000 pieces, $30 at Joann's. Cheapest I'm seeing it for is $20. That puts it at about 91 cents per thousand, which means more expensive, pretty sure less colors, and they're mixed together. Amazon says it's 30 different colors. So yeah, if you're a beginner, don't get this crap, get that pack. Goodbye!